Hockey Gearheads, it's Jeff with Gear Report here at the Battle Wagon 3. I want to give you a quick tour. Let's check it out. All right, so what we're going to do is dive right in and talk about what's different about the 1165 series of trucks. One of the things you can see right here is the extended nose piece here that sticks out from under the hood. That's to accommodate a larger cooling stack, and they do that on the turbo engines. So that's a difference from our prior trucks is we've got the larger cooling stack up front, and then also that means that up under here we have a much larger protrusion on the doghouse for the to accommodate the turbo on the back of the engine. That changes what kind of radio tray or, or center console we can put in there. So outside, we've got the Goodyear Wrangler MTR tires. These are the E-rated version on the paired bolt, 24 bolt wheels. You see that typically on Humvees that are up armored. And so if we step back here and look along the body, you see a bunch of holes all on the side. That is where the armor panels were bolted on. That's part of the demilitarization process. When they demil, they take all of that off because you, know, you can't have normal people having uh, body armor on a truck. This door is uh, a standard X door that I acquired. I've actually got one at the moment, but I wanted to show you what it looks like here. You see it's not the straight door, it's the curved door because we don't have the upper armor, which is required for the straight doors. All right, inside, you'll notice something different from prior versions of the truck. It has a whole new um, heating and cooling system for the interior with different ductwork. There's one, two, three, four up front, and one down here as far as the vents. And then in the back, we have a separate air conditioning system with the vents coming out there for the back seat passengers. We've got the adjustable base and the high back seats all around here. The front two are brand new ones that I just put in. The back two are actually some of the nicer seats that I already had. They're close to new, but not quite, but the same type that was already in there. The 1165A1 series, the rev trucks have a different seat base that has some impact absorbing angles built into it. So if there's any kind of IED or something underneath, it's going to deform and absorb some of that energy. So what you lose is the storage space under the seats that you had in the prior models. So you notice the roof looks a little bit different than what we've seen on prior trucks. This is aluminum where the uh, Battle Wagon 2 had a steel roof and up on the edge it was a nice gentle curve coming down. This is flat and then it comes down at an angle with this extra little piece to deflect water over the edge of the doors. This is typical of the 11 series trucks. A couple other differences, the C-pillar area in the back is cast aluminum and we have a solid rear wall inside. Uh, some of the turret support stuff is built into the roof itself. We've got a factory installed plug up here. Since uh, the turret delete, I guess we could call it, because we don't have a turret installed in this truck. Other things are a little bit different. We have a factory tachometer up here. The air conditioning controls down here are in the same place as the controls for the prior version, but in earlier models, you had a full knob that you could do more or less heat. Uh, we don't have that here. You can have high or low for the fan, and it's either on heat or air. Uh, so that, that, that's what you get. You see an 80 mile an hour speedometer this is the electronic speedometer version. That's different than early trucks. And the temperature gauge up here has a little alarm light, alert light on there. Those are differences up here on the dash as well as uh, the turn signal cancel ring that is right here and works with the newer style turn signal to self cancel, you know, so you don't drive down the road looking like an old person with it uh, turned on. We've still got the same headlight switch down here. 
brake and gas pedal because all military Humvees are automatic, so obviously we don't have a clutch pedal down there. Speaking of the automatic transmission, this is what everyone gets excited about with the newer trucks is when they ask, hey, does it have bark? Bark and the, the D with the circle, those are the indicators that you have the four-speed transmission and that allows you to get much better highway speeds out of the truck without running it super, super uh, high RPMs. Also in the center over the tunnel, we've got the plywood insulation and then the regular uh, kind of cloth, plastic, whatever it is, insulation on the sides. Pretty basic in here. They took things like gun clips, you know, the M16 holders, that kind of thing out. If they were ever in this truck, they took it out before we got it. You see some uh, fire suppression system sensors up here. Um, there was the uh, bottle holder and another sensor in the, and the dispense nozzle in the back, but uh, I took those out since I don't have a bottle for it. Under each of the rear fenders, we've got the air conditioning condenser. It, it's up under here. Right now we've got the short exhaust on here. I'm gonna switch that out for the Fording exhaust stack that comes up high uh, to match the Fording intake. On the back, these trucks, the 1165 series, comes with the airlift bumper and the mud flaps on the back. These are things I had to add to prior trucks. It already came on it. I did add the Rhino tire carrier and uh, St. Nick has just kind of climbed on there. I, not even sure what he's doing there. Hmm. Uh, on this truck, there were some flat plates that um, some sort of electronics, I assume, attached to it prior. Uh, those were taken off during D-mill. And you can see the little rectangle where the little mounting bracket for the arms for a soft top would go. And you can also see one, two, three, four, five, and then across the back. Those are the clips where when you put the soft cargo cover on, they kind of clip on over there. And then there's a channel coming up the side here and across the top for it to go into. I've got to find a top that will fit on that. That's kind of intriguing to me. I've already got the hardware to rebuild this section and make the bows to hold the top up. I've got to find the top itself. So let me know if you know anything about that up here. The suspension's beefed up a little. Oh, here's something. These are body mounts because they use this blue polymer. I, I don't know what it is. It's like a hard rubber type thing. These body mounts fall apart. So I've got four of these because at least three or four of them are falling apart. So I'm gonna replace those soon. On the interior, a couple of things we've done so far is uh, put these molly panels on the back of the two front seats and have a couple little pouches to put things in. I haven't started kitting those out yet. I've got an aviation intercom and headsets in here so we can all talk to each other when I get people in here riding around. I've just got them sitting in place right now. I haven't decided exactly how I want to mount things and I haven't run power for them yet, but just kind of put them in so we can see what they're going to look like. There's a RAM mount uh, cell phone holder clipped on up here and another one up on the uh, windshield wiper motor and control so that uh, we got two places to put cell phones. Oh, let's look at the big uh, W bumper up front. This is a copy of the big special forces bumper, the big pusher bumper. You know, the real ones are made of aluminum and maybe even lighter than this, but I got a reasonable deal on this and uh, picked it up because I thought it looked kind of cool. I, I'm hoping it'll be a little bit more durable than the aluminum version. So some things they've done differently on the uh, Rev B truck. So these are gonna be like your 1165A1s, not the 1165s, but the A1s. So the Rev B is gonna have things like a rear differential cooler in the back. So they've redesigned the parking brake system. They've got some different cross member and body harness improvements underneath. The frame rails are beefed up quite a bit. Uh, so it's a three piece frame rail instead of a one piece now where they have reinforced them at either end. They also have a larger, more durable pitman arm, idler arm, center link, and cross brace. Let's see, shock absorbers. I'm assuming this means that they're new. I'm not sure what the part number difference is, but they do have different control arms with different 
that it says enhanced bushings and ball joints. So the whole steering and suspension system has been upgraded. Let's see, a new power steering pump, enhanced steering geometry to make the steering a little easier, I guess. Shepard steering gear, reduced steering effort. Oh, it is. It is very easy to steer this truck. Geared fan drive is up in the engine compartment. We'll look at that in a bit. The radiator shroud and oil cooler improve cooling and engine performance, reduce noise and emission. I think that's part of what they call the cool pack, the larger cooling system that's up front. The wheels are the uh, paired bolt, 24 bolt wheels. It says it has the M1114 springs. So the springs and shocks combination that you put on here work really well. It's got the different airlift brackets. That's uh, a lot of what's different here. Here are the airlift brackets that are different up here on the hood. You see they're uh, cut and instead of being the, the round stock. Other things that we've done here, let's see, we've got a uh, different set of headlights up here. I'm not sure if we're gonna keep these because they have already got some moisture in them. So this is one of the different uh, knockoff of the JW speaker lights that a company sent us to review and they look really awesome to begin with but they're getting some condensation inside which makes me wonder if they're gonna last I don't know so we'll see these trucks have LEDs on the side markers but oddly bulbs in the turn signals one of the things I did right away when we got this truck was replace the incandescent tail light, brake light, turn signal combination here with these LED lights. I think between LED headlights and LED tail lights, that's the very first thing that just about everyone should do with a, a military Humvee because the stock ones really are a bit less than adequate in my opinion. Oh, here's something neat in the back. I've got this new, what do we call this? It's made as a rooftop carrier for a civilian vehicle, but I'm actually using it because it's almost exactly the right size to fit in the back. And it's a real heavy duty waterproof bag. So I've just got some boxes and stuff in here now, but if I need to carry some gear in the back, that bag fits perfectly so I can wrap it up and keep it dry even if it's raining out. So that gives me a lot of flexibility with the back end. Oh, and something else that's interesting is um, you're at the base of the floor here. You don't see it from this side, but when you look from this side, there's actually a little joint filler down here that's corrugated that matches up so you don't have water running up. It, it seals it so you don't have water running up into the bed when you stop if it's raining. I think that's pretty cool. Something else I'm gonna do here shortly. Let's get the camera up here on top. I picked these up from Todd Herget. You know, Todd, he's out in a bunch of the Humvee groups. Um, I think that I'm gonna put them on right about here. I have grab handles like on the GMB trucks, uh, which will be good for hanging stuff or to give someone a, you know, something to grab onto getting in and out of the truck. I've got four of them, you know, so this is one of the shorter ones. And then I've got one that's an inch or three longer that will go here. So I've got uh, four, uh, two pairs of those. So we'll be able to put those on the front and back. I'm looking for more doors. I've got the one X door over there. I need the other three in order to complete the set. So if you have X doors that are in good shape or supplemental armor X doors that are in good shape, let me know. I'm looking for those. We've already replaced the uh, complete mirror and bracket assembly on both sides on this truck. Those are brand new. I've just got a little single radio shelf up here. I've got a whole bunch of radio shelves in different configurations from the big Blue Force Tracker to a couple multi-level ones in different shapes and sizes. I just threw this one in to, to see how it works. I get just a little Rubbermaid container sitting up there for now to give you a place to put pens and cups and little things. Definitely let me know what questions you have about this truck. All right, so up under here in the back, you see we've got the pencil to hook up a trailer. And, you know, I think with this Rhino tire carrier, it can actually be lifted up just a little bit so that the trailer can be hooked up under that. I have a pencil extension to put on here, 
and I haven't done it yet because it interferes with this bracket that holds the Rhino tire carrier in place. So I'm still debating whether I want to make a new bracket to bolt on top of the Pinto extension so we can pull this out a little further and make it easier to hook up to the trailer or not. Still debating on that. Under here you can see there are the cooling lines to that cooled rear differential, which is one of the differences. The ground clearance is actually uh, in the center of the truck. It's uh, an inch or two, when I measured it, it's an inch or two taller than some of the earlier generation trucks. I think the uh, heavier duty suspension holds it up a little higher. open the hood. One of the neat things about this with the frame extensions on the front that, that come out to hold the ECV front end, we, we put this bumper out front. We don't have to worry about tipping it forward when we open the hood like we would with some of the earlier model trucks. All right. With the hood propped open, one of the neat things when you open a Humvee hood is this hood rod automatically catches itself in the little thing to hold it up. So when you're ready to put it down, you lift a little and pull out to get it out of that little catch, and then it'll let the hood down. But now it's up, I don't have to worry about it falling on me. A difference you'll see, obviously, uh, right off the bat from earlier models that do not have the geared fan drive is the Cadillac valve sitting here controls when the the hydraulic clutch in the fan turns it on and off in the older model trucks. Well, in the newer ones that have the geared fan drive, which is down there, you don't have the Cadillac valve up here. This is the larger cooling stack we talked about that, that this extended nose was made to accommodate a larger radiator and cooler there. There we go, this is a 400 amp, 24 volt generator. That, it's massive, absolutely massive. I don't know, is a civilian not running comms gear in here? I don't know what I would ever run that would require that much power. But, you know, I can pretty much hook an inverter up and run most of my house off of this in an emergency. So I'm kind of stoked about that. Over here, the suspension looks uh, pretty normal from this side. I, I think there were some revisions in some of the geometry for a few things, but uh, I don't know all those details, so I'm not gonna try to speculate on that. Oh, air filter housing was not fastened. Now, see the air conditioning compressor down here. a little better look at that geared fan drive here. Let's see if I can throw a little light in there. There we go. There be the geared fan drive down there at the bottom. Let me know what questions you have. Uh, <laughs> you can see one of the things that happened during the demil process is when they cut the uh, bolts and everything holding the armor across the bottom of the front of the windshield, they tore up the, uh, the windshield washer nozzle. So I put a new one on here, a new one on over there. They cut the tubes that carry the windshield washer fluid. So I've got to get some new windshield washer fluid tubing and able to be able to hook that up and run the windshield washer, which I, I also had to replace the pump in there. They're almost always bad. That's pretty typical. I just replaced this hose that goes to the CDR valve. And of course I had to replace this, the Fording CDR valve because that's something that for a reason that I don't remotely understand that they take apart during the demil process. Down here you can almost see the lift pump, the mechanical fuel pump. That was uh, the, one of the first things we had to replace and then obviously the transmission failed shortly after we got it running and we had to rebuild the transmission. There's the turbo crossover back there and the actual turbo is back behind. You kind of almost see the wastegate back there. Uh, 
All right, let me know what questions you have. Oh, there's something else I forgot to talk about. The Willwood brakes. So these are upgraded brakes from prior model. There's that massive horn up there, a little round thing in the middle that goes meep meep and sounds really silly. Just a military horn. The upgraded suspension. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments. A big thanks to our patrons for helping us bring you more unbiased, hands-on reviews. Thank you very much, and we'll see you at the range.